Jack and the Beanstalk Adapted by Mara Alperin Illustrated by Mark Chambers Deep in the countryside lived a widow and her son Jack. Their cottage was crumbling and their clothes were patched. They were very, very poor. One day, Jack's mother said, We must sell our cow. Take her to the market, Jack, and bring home some gold pieces. So he set off to town. But before Jack had gotten very far, he met a strange little man. That's a fine cow, the man said. I'll swap you five magic beans for her. Magic beans, said Jack. Are they really magic? Magic they are, or chop off my beard and knit it into a jumper, croaked the little old man. Magic beans. Jack couldn't wait to tell his mother. He clutched them tightly and ran all the way home. Jack's mother was furious. We need money, not useless old beans, she cried. And she threw them out the window in disgust. But late that night, a tiny bean sprout poked out from the ground. And then it grew. And it grew. And it grew. And grew. The next morning, the beanstalk stretched high into the sky. The beans were magic, Jack cried. But what's that at the top? So Jack climbed up, 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 up the beanstalk. At last, he reached the very top. There, shimmering in the sunlight, was a magnificent castle. Just then, Jack's stomach rumbled. I must find some breakfast, he thought. And he tapped on the castle door. The door creaked open. And a huge giantess smiled down. Hello, Jack shouted up. Please, do you have any food? You poor thing, boomed the giantess. Come right in, but quickly before the giant gets up. What a marvelous feast! There was an enormous loaf of bread and a gigantic jar of jelly. Jack dug in at once. But suddenly, the room began to shake. Oh my goodness, cried the giantess. He's coming! And she shoved Jack under a teacup to hide. Into the room stopped a big, scary, and hungry giant. Fee, fi, fo, fun. I smell the blood of an English one. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones in two like bread. Don't be silly, there's nobody here but us, the giantess scolded. Now go and wash before breakfast. Jack trembled. I must leave now, he thought. He was halfway down the hall when he heard a... It was a hen with bright golden feathers. Help! She clucked. Set me free and I'll lay you golden eggs every morning. Jack scooped up the hen. But then he heard huge footsteps thundering after them. Jack raced out of the door. He jumped and slid down the beanstalk. Down, 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 all the way to his cottage. Mother, quick, bring the axe, he shouted. Jack's mother swung the axe at the beanstalk. It shuddered and shook, and then the giant came tumbling down. Jack hugged his mother tight. Look what I found, he said. 
and he showed her the golden hen. Oh, Jack, said his mother, I'm so glad you're safe, and you were right about those magic beans. So Jack and his mother and the golden hen all lived happily ever after. And with lots of golden eggs, they were never poor again. And that's the end of the story. I'm Raphael and Amelia's dad, and thanks for watching. And thank you, Raphael, who's my favorite artist, for making that awesome 3D city. I never would have thought of that idea. I don't know where you came up with that, but I'm really proud of you and great job. And I hope you keep making more excellent pieces of art. Jack and the Beanstalk is a classic children's story about having a dream, chasing your dream, overcoming obstacles, and being happy with your decisions. So the images that we see in the story are things like the beans. The beans aren't really beans. The beans represent the seeds of Jack's imagination, which flourish to be this massive beanstalk and lead him to wealth. But along the way, he has to encounter some obstacles. In this case, it's a giant. Is Jack a violent person who kills giants? No, he's overcoming an obstacle. And at the very end of the story, uh, we see Jack living uh, a wealthy life with his mother in a nice big house in a pool. Is that happily ever after? No. He's happy because in his heart he made the right decision to chase his imagination and his own creativity. So the moral of that story is to encourage your own children to pursue who they really are and what they want and to chase their dreams. And who knows what they'll find and we hope that will lead to their own happily ever after. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.